coding. Hmm. So next is very simple. Uh, we already know J K flip flop, correct? So we know J K Q N. How it determines like characteristic uh, table I am drawing. So zero zero means same state will repeat, right? Zero one means it's a reset condition. One zero is one. One one is Q bar. Sorry, just a minute. This is Q. Right. Whatever is present state, the next state is going to be the same. Right. Similarly, I can draw all these characteristic. I mean, uh, truth table, then characteristic equation, excitation table, and state state type. Okay. Now, next flip flop that we need to see is T flip flop. Hmm? See, remember, all this happens only when according to clock equal to one. Correct. I didn't mention this here. Otherwise, uh, what uh, you know, if you if you want to be very clear, right? We need to draw like this. Let me go back to this. So, clock is also input J, K, Q, N, right? So, uh, if clock is zero, no matter whatever J K is, your Q N is going to be Q. Right. Only if clock is one, then only whatever we discuss will hold. When clock is one, zero one, this is zero. Clock is one, one zero, that is one. When clock is one, check Q one. Right. This is the characteristic equation. I'm sorry, characteristic table. Right, that one must keep in mind. Right. So next T flip flop. So very simple. It's just extension of J K. So you have J K. Right. Let's say let me write the symbol J K Q Q bar and clock. Hmm? Suppose if I join these two, J and K shorted. Right. And this is T. Right, where j equal to t, whatever is equal that is equal to t. So why this is? What is this t stands for? Toggle. Okay. So what does it mean? Uh, let's see what happens. So let's here. Uh, see here, the inputs are clock and t. Uh, let's neglect clock for some time because we already know that you know whenever clock equal to one, the input happen, right? Assume that. Otherwise, uh, one input is q. Uh, of course, you have q n, right? For one input, how many combinations are possible? Two combinations, right? Either uh, zero. Okay. If t equal to zero, what does it mean? J equal to zero. K equal to zero. If J equal to zero, K equal to zero, we know already what is the condition. This condition, right? J zero, A zero. You will get a Q. Okay, don't get confused here. This is not Q complement. Okay, that is just Q. Okay, then if T equal to one, what will happen? Uh, J will become one. K will become one. And you know already, j equal to one, k equal to one. What is this? Uh, Q complement, right? Means Q will be complemented. If zero is there, one will be there. One will be there. Next state. If one is there, zero will be the next state, right? So this is called toggling, right? Toggling. No change, right? That's why this is called as a toggle flip flop. So lot of applications in counters. Etc. Okay, especially up counter, down counter. Today, if time permits, we will discuss all these things. Where we will, we need to think about this, right? And since this all happens only when at when the clock equal to one, right? This is also called as what level sensitive, right? This is level sensitive. Level 
sensitive right right this is d d flip flop next is d flip flop what is that again again you take jk q q complement hmm. now again there is a clock here now what you do you slightly invert right you invert the input that is going to k now this you name it as some d okay so again if you build the uh characteristic table hey is my sound audible am i audible okay clear thank you so if d is zero what will happen uh if d is zero j is zero hmm? and this is going to be one right k is going to be one right so j zero k one what is the condition j zero k one this condition right j zero k one is what zero q n will be zero now if you make j d equal to one if you make d equal to one then j equal to one k equal to okay this will become zero j one k zero what is it j one k zero is this condition right right means it's one sir if d equal to one Now you see, just this Q n is just a reflection of D, correct? Q n is just D, right? So whatever the data that comes in as at here will be just transferred to Q. That's it. So that's why it is also called as a data flip flop. Okay. So this will be very much useful uh, when you have uh, memory applications, right? You want to store some data. Correct. So it is not a buffer. Okay, don't get confused. Okay. So maybe buffer is something like you can say that you know whatever is at the input side is going as output side, but the hitch here is it will store it as long as you don't disturb it. Okay. So in that sense, you can think. All right. So this is about this. This will be very much useful when we go for shift registers. Okay. Hmm? If time permits, today we will discuss that. So uh, that's all from my side on this uh, flip flops and other things. See, once you have uh, characteristic table, hmm? now what is the next step? Truth table. You need to do this as exercise, right? Because we have discussed clearly in our class. Then followed by characteristic equation i already got it here then what excitation table excitation table then state diagram right these are the three things so the get question may come in any aspect right so anybody has any message All right, so let's dive in to the problems. Okay, now solve this problem. What is race condition in north based SR latch? In our based SR latch, okay, whatever we discussed is the same thing. You can also have NAND based, okay. So instead of NAR gate, you can have a NAND based. Okay. 
So the notation will slightly differ, okay, according to what you are using it. So uh, just uh, keep in mind that uh, just, this is universal thing. Like uh, you just when they mention a uh, latch, then you need to recall only this. Just recall this. What's the answer? Okay. Option A. Hmm. S equal to one, R equal to one. Option A. Okay. This we have discussed already. In the last class, we have discussed it clearly, right? This one, option B is the right answer. This arises when S equal to 1 or R equal to 1, <clears throat> and B when we make S equal to 0 and R equal to 0, then the output will become unpredictable. Why did I say that? Because see, when s equal to 1, r equal to 1, for an R gate, if one of the input is 1, obviously output will be 0. Correct? So this is not a problem. This is not an issue at all. But the issue is, when we make s equal to 0, r equal to 0 immediately after that. What will happen? Suppose if you make s equal to 0, r equal to 0. Now what is the feedback here? This is 0, right? So 0 will be applied here, this 0 will be applied here. Now what will happen here is, the output of this is 0 plus 0 complement, this is 0 plus 0 complement. Now here the question is which one will become 1 faster? Whether q bar this node will become 1? or this node will become one faster. That is decided by the timing uh, parameters okay, or uh, delay parameters of these two targets. You understand that? Now, this uh, delay depends on many factors, right? This de delay depends on the family, this, I mean, which family it belongs to, and also this delay depends on uh, the time, right, over the time the delay changes, correct. So the output will become predictable, right. Ideally your system should depend on R and S, instead of depending on R and S, now the output is depending on the internal details of every gate, okay, that's what it means by unpredictable. Okay, so that's why it is called as race condition. Are you guys clear? So, so it all it all started because you made s equal to one r equal to one. Right, this is the triggering point. Okay, this is the triggering point. Right. So we tell, don't 
apply those inputs. So S equal to 1, R equal to 1 is not a culprit, but that's a triggering point, right? So that's thing. Next. Now people should know the difference between race and race around. That's why I wrote it back to back. Race around occurs in. Just give me a minute, guys. I'll just be back. Race around of person. Try this. Okay, anyone got the answer? Option C. Hmm. So, if we look at it carefully, no? Yes, option C is right. But we have already discussed j equal to 1, k equal to 1 will be q bar. But I didn't discuss about this because I was waiting for this to happen. So if you look at this, right? this is your clock. Hmm? This is your J, this is your K, correct? Then you have your basic latch. Hmm? Then one will come from here to here. Okay. Q, Q bar. Now the issue is the sensitive issue. I thought people will ask, but no one asked, so I just skip it. Right? Now when you make J equal to 1, this, this much we know, right? Let's assume that it is 0. This is 1 because we know that for j equal to 1, k equal to 1, your next state is going to be q bar. Let us understand this in detail, right? Okay. q equal to 0 means this 0 will be applied here. Uh, this 1 will be applied here. This clock is 1. So 1, 1, 1, this is 1. Then 0, 1, 1, this is going to be 0. Since one of the input is 1, so obviously output will be uh, 0. This 0 will be applied here. This will be 1. Correct? The new value will be 1. See, the feedback still exists, no? This 1 will come here again. This 0 will come here again. Right? Then 1, 1, 1, what will happen? This is going to be 1. 1, 1, 0, what is going to happen? This is 0. Since one of the input is 1, the output will be 0. Since this 0 is coming here, 0 plus 0, whole complement, this is going to become 1. And again, this feedback exists again. Again, it will come back. That means, if you track the QN, 
okay initially it was uh, zero this is initial state we assume initial state then it moved to one then it moved to zero then it moved to one moved to zero if you plot this like a graph all right it's like this now what is this called as this is called as race around between zero and one so your q and next state is racing between zero and one because this feedback exists and clock is one it is going to happen one way to eliminate is so why because it is happening because the clock equal to one is there for a long time right let's say for example clock zero right let's say this is clock one zero one now you reduce this time of clock equal to one you make it like this very very small so how much is required just enough for this data to process that's all let's say this is around 10 nanoseconds delay hmm? let's say 10 nanoseconds delay is there you keep it for maybe 12 nanoseconds right you keep this for 12 nanoseconds just for the data to process in to enter in right so you just give sufficient sufficient clock equal to i mean sufficient time for clock equal to 1 then you make it zero so what happens is the moment it will reach back this clock is already zero because this is zero these two inputs are zero 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 means whatever is there already will be repeated right that's all happens so this is how one can handle the race around condition in JK. Right? Next. Uh. So, okay, before we go this, we go there. Uh, I want to discuss something. Guys, is that is that point clear? Race around how to eliminate? Yes, sure. So first thing is, when you keep clock equal to one, right? When you keep clock equal to one for long time, what happens is, whatever the new data that has come here, again, it will come back, right? Since you connected this in one one mode, whatever is there again will be complementary, right? Now again, that data will come back. Since clock equal to one, again that will be processed. So it's like if you have a zero, you will get one, then again zero, and again one, and again it keeps on happening, right? You didn't change J and K value just because clock is one for a long time. That's why the new values have come back and again made it zero one zero one zero one zero one. So this is called as a race around condition. So why did, why did it happen? Because clock equal to 1 for a long time. Hmm. Probably saying race around condition can learn by using master slave or using edge degree. Yeah, yeah, that's precisely my next topic. Okay. So, so you make it clock equal to 1 for as small time as possible. Okay. Such that whatever the data, the new output okay will not will not find any path again to go to the output okay ashutosh are you clear yeah okay this is one way the other way is master slave configuration okay somebody was mentioning there is something called master slave configuration All right so what what is that is for example you take uh, hmm? <laughs> For you to understand, I will teach in terms of deep loop. Okay, this is clock. 
this is q let's say this is q bar hmm? now you see there are two symbols that i can use okay level sensitive right so before that let me establish the basics very very clearly level sensitive flip flops right let's say for example Now let's say this is D flip flop, this is Q, Q bar, this is clock. Now here, this flip flop is sensitive to clock equal to one. Hmm? Whenever clock equal to one, then only the input output transfer and everything will take place, right? I can also have a flip flop, something like this, clock. Now you see this, now this flip-flop output is sensitive to clock equal to zero. Just a symbol. Right? Now we are clear with the symbol, right? Now let's go to master slave activation. Keep it. Mm. I have a flip flop something like this, right? D. Mm. D. I'll take this flip flop. I mean, level sensitive. This is, let's say, for example. Okay, this is sensitive to clock equal to 1. Hmm? And I told you already, right? This can also be called as what? Gated latch. Or level sensitive flip flop, right? Now it is level, uh, which level? Like positive level, right? So I can also say positive latch. Okay, you can say 0, 1, right? This is also called as a positive. This can also be called as a negative, right? Positive dash or a negative dash, something like that. Now, I will take one more latch. Now, this is not a positive latch. I will take a negative latch. Hmm? This is D. Now, this is a clock. Q, Q bar, right? Now what I will do is output of this plus latch will connect to this input and uh, let's say this is q1, q1 bar, q2, q2 bar. Nothing I did, okay, just I connected. Now both the clocks I will connect, I will short it. Hmm? Right. This is connected to a common source. Now this is x, let's say input is x and let's say this is y. Hmm? Now let's see what will happen. Right? If clock equal to 1, what will happen? Q1 will receive x, Q2, what will happen to Q2? When clock equal to 1, Right. Let's say this is clock. Right during this time, you were. Uh, this is let's say flip flop one. Hmm? Or L one latch one latch two to be precise. L one is let's say on or activated. L two is off, not activated. Correct now, because if this is one, then only Q one will get X. So. When clock equal to 1, your L2, your L2 will not be active, correct? If it is not active means same state will be repeated, right? Q, Q1N is X, Q2N is Q2. Then, 
if clock equal to 0 then what will happen q1 n is q1 n only which is nothing but x is there your q2 n is what already x was moved from here to here during the clock equal to 1 right your q1 has already become x your q2 was q2 now when clock equal to 0 happened during that time x has already been here so what will happen q2 will become x q1 will be equal to the same q1 correct so q2 will become x q1 n will be the same thing whatever is the value that is of the q correct so this x has been transferred to y means y equal to x see very simple thing when clock equal to 1 this is activated this is not activated because of that whatever the data is there it has been transferred right i am just repeating it's very simple topic right this x will be easily transferred to this node particular node right now that time this is not activated right so y will be the same whatever is you know whatever is present state on the y it will be same thing will be repeated when the clock equal to zero happens this is not activated means it is disconnected from this node right this node is disconnected from the input node right but this is activated l2 is activated so whatever is this value will be transferred to y so to put it in a nutshell if you want to transfer the data from input to the output what if i give clock equal to 0 doesn't happen if i just give clock equal to 1 doesn't happen what i should give i should give clock equal to 0 1 first this i should give followed by followed by immediately i should give clock equal to 0 see if i just give clock equal to 0 in the data cannot be transferred from input to the output right if i just give clock equal to 1 that doesn't happen if i give clock equal to 1 followed by clock equal to 0 then the data will be transferred from input node to the output node correct so y equal to x happens only when clock equal to 1 to clock equal to 0 all right so if you look at the output is sensitive to what this is not sensitive to the level right so for a clock 0 1 0 1 let's say 0 1 0 1 okay this is called level what is this level again what is this level what is this level what is this called as this is called as edge what is this is called edge what is this is edge what is this edge now we have positive level negative level you have positive edge negative edge right so if the edge is rising from 0 to 1 very simple this is called as positive edge if the edge is falling from 1 to 0 this is called as a negative edge now based on our discussion can you tell me what is the type of the sensitivity is it positive edge sensitive or negative edge sensitive yes right right so whatever we have discussed so far this is what is called as a negative edge sensitive flip flop or negative edge triggered flip flop hmm? 
Guys, are you guys clear till this point? It is very, very important for our counters discussion. If you give 0, the output cannot be changed. If you give 1, output cannot be changed. You only if you give 1, followed by 0 as a clock, then only the output can be changed. Is everyone clear? Type in your chat box. If you are clear, type yes. Hmm? So, let us connect the dots. The way you have level sensitive flip flop representation, these are called symbols. What are the symbols for edge sensitive or edge triggered flip flops? Level sensitive or level triggered, right? Now, you have D, Q, Q complement. Let us say this is positive edge. Only difference is you look at the clock, okay, you have a symbol like this, arrow. Okay, based on this you have to identify whether it is level sensitive or edge sensitive. Amen. Now you see there is an arrow followed by the bubble like this. Okay, this represents positive edge, this represents negative edge. This is the symbol. Right? Now, this is a negative edge, right? Let us say for example, uh, I am just wantedly delaying it so that you guys need to get this in your subconscious minds. Alright? So, let us say, if you want to write the characteristic table for negative edge triggered D flip flop, everything is same, right? Let us say this is clock here, D, Q, right? Now, I want to write a characteristic table. Characteristic table. I have clock as an input, D, Q, N, right? If clock is 0, no matter whatever is D, your output is going to be the same state, no change. Clock is 1, no matter whatever is the D, again no change, right? So, if I give a negative edge, right, then D is 0, is 0. If I give a negative edge, D is 1, QN is 1, okay? This is where the action of flip-flop will take place because it is sensitive to negative edge. Suppose if you get a positive edge, no matter whatever happens, it is going to be the same. Okay, no change. So, except these two conditions, irrespective of whatever happens, right? Right? So, the output will remain no change. No change in the output. Our next state will be the same state as the previous state. Correct? So, are you guys clear about how to write on all those things? Let me know through your chat box. Let's say yes or no. Right? Similarly, if they say negative edge triggered JK flip flop, same thing. So instead of this D, you will have two more inputs, right? JK, that's all. But this is going to be the same. Hmm? 
right so that's the difference between a uh, you know uh, level sensitive flip flops and a edge sensitive flip flop right so let's start the problems now let me know what is this actually is it a level sensitive or edge sensitive flip flop type in your chat box level or edge if it is l level if it is e edge is it l or e is it l or e is it level sensitive or edge sensitive looking at the symbol hey guys all of you should participate in the chat okay okay bonsa you are right hey ashutosh you need to think see the symbol is what there is an arrow right there is an arrow right correct na no? something like this what is the arrow represents you see this here we discussed already the moment there is an arrow that's a edge if there is nothing then that's this right and also i'll tell you 99% of the time we will be using edge sensitive when i say flip flop that will be edge sensitive okay okay right now you solve this problem now anyways you identified it i just want to give you see i strategically wrote all these problems sequentially one by one because i want to clear the basics first then we go into the problems so what is the expected output when the flip flop is enabled by using the plug they are already telling okay enabled the flip flop is enabled by a clock so you don't need to worry whether it is enabled or not so what is the expected output when the flip flop is enabled by using a clock enabled means what they gave a or oh, now it is edge sensitive what is this edge which edge is it positive edge or negative edge is it positive edge or negative edge hmm p r n Hmm? Is it positive edge or negative edge? Or am I confusingly wrote this? That's it. No bubble. Hmm. Correct. Yes, Ramesh, you are right. Probably is right. It's a positive edge. All right. So it's positive edge. Hmm. So now you don't need to worry whether the flip flop is enabled or not. It's already enabled. They're saying it's already enabled. Now you need to find out what is the expected output when the flip flop is this. now tell me what is answer a b c d hmm option d okay any other answers see uh, there are multiple ways many ways to do it okay now you see this if you look at the answers right it is given in terms of some value but a better to use characteristic equation right when it is enabled we know already what is the next state expected state or next state is same right a q bar plus k bar q right yeah somebody is saying something 
Q complement. Okay, let's see. Now, right, according to this condition, according in this flip flop, right, what is J here? This value, right? What is this output of this gate, right? What is this and and gate, right? Correct. So one and what is other input? Other input is Q. Here Q bar is coming, right? One and Q whole complement. One and Q bar whole complement. So one and Q is Q. Q complement. Q complement whole complement is Q, right? So according to this, J is Q complement. K is Q. So Q n is what? Q complement and Q complement plus K is Q. Q complement and Q. Q and Q complement. This will be zero. So this is Q complement and Q complement. We know it is going to be Q complement. So option D is the right answer. That's how we can solve these problems. Okay. Right. So let's go to next problem. So you can stop me anyways if you don't understand or if you are not clear. Huh? In master slave configuration, the control inputs are applied to. Uh, we know already this is master. You just think about it later on and uh, solve this problem. If the present state, present state of the flip flop is Q, then the next state, when the clock pulse is applied. Now you see what is this flip flop? Level or edge? This is edge triggered flip flop. And you see the symbol the bubble here. It is negative edge triggered flip flop. Very good, Ravali. This is a negative edge triggered flip flop. Again, they are saying when the clock pulse is applied. They are say, they are, there is some sort of saying that when the clock pulse is applied. Right, so you don't need to worry whether the clock is this flip flop is enabled or not, it is enabled. Again, you can apply the similar logic JQ bar plus K bar Q. Right, so what is J here? It is Q. What is K here? Q bar, right? Uh, J is Q, K is Q bar. Q and Q bar plus K is Q complement, right? Q. This is 0, this is going to be Q and Q. Right? What is Q and Q? Q. Am I right? All right. Hmm. Now do this. What is Qn? So I don't think today we can discuss counters and all. So next week we will discuss counters, up counters, down counters, very easy, okay, very, very easy. And um, asynchronous counters, synchronous counters, okay. See guys, you need to join exactly at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'll be starting at 5, followed by the problems. And then Ashutosh has asked me something about XR operation. Today at the end, I will discuss. Okay, after 6 o'clock, I'll discuss. Whoever wants to know. Uh, and his question was, what is the difference between, uh, you know, he has some confusion regarding 3 input XR and 3 input XR. That's very good actually. Uh, this is a, That is only miscellaneous thing in the uh, gates. Okay, somehow I missed it. And I, just, I don't know. I somehow missed it. So... I will cover that. After looking at this problem, I realized. Okay, 3 input XR and 3 input XNR, how to compute it. That's little mis miscellaneous. See, if you look at this, very simple, right? This is a nothing, nothing but a T flip-flop, right? What is T here? L, XR, or M. And if you would have done this here, see J Q bar plus K bar Q, right? Now J equal to K equal to T. Now what is this T Q bar plus T bar Q, correct? Instead of J and K, I am putting T. Now what is this? 
TXR of P, correct? What is given now? What is there in place of T? LXR of M. LXR of MXR of Q. Okay, this is the answer. LXR MXR of Q. Uh, by the way, this is the characteristic equation of T flip flop. Yeah, that's why this is very easy actually. This digital is all about very easy. Just playing around with zeros and ones. Okay, so let's go to the next problem. What is the expected state when the clock pulse is applied for a T flip flop? Again, if you decode this according to the symbol, this is edge sensitive because I can see some arrow there and bubble was there, so negative edge trick for flip flop. Okay, let's see. So now if you look at this, this what is T that is coming from Q bar, right? Right, Q and name we know already T X R of P. Just now we have seen, right? Now here T is already Q complement X R of Q. Hmm? What is this? Q bar complement Q. Yeah, you know A X R of B, right? A B bar plus A bar B. Hmm? So, Q bar dot Q bar plus Q bar Q bar dot Q. Right? So, it is Q bar plus Q. It is going to be 1. So, output is 1. Okay. Uh, do this one. Initially, JK flip flop is stored with 1. It means output is 1. Like Q1 is 1. That's what they mean to say. If the clock is applied, what is the expected output at Q2? Hmm? If clock is applied, now most of your concepts will be very clear right now. All of you should attempt for this. What is the expected output? at Q2. See for this clock is there. Here the clock is coming from Q1. That's the catch point. Okay.
Now you can uh, see this. Now the clocks are same, not same for this end. So the this output depends on this clock. This output depends on this clock. And anyways, the clock is applied. So for this flip flop, hmm, uh, j and j equal to one, k equal to one. What is this j equal to one, k equal to one means? Your q one will be complemented, right? Initially, what is that they are saying? They it is already stored with one. So once it gets complemented, means one to zero means output is one. Then it becomes zero. It's a negative edge. And you see this flip flop. This is also a negative edge, right? Negative edge ticket. So the negative edge is coming. If the negative edge is coming, this will be enabled. If something else would have come up, then it will be disabled, right? Correct. So negative edge is coming means it will be enabled. Since it is enabled, what is Q two n depends on? Because next state expected output, right? This is next state, right? Or expected output, right? Expected output. What is the just now we saw right T X R of T, right? What is this T? Just a T is just nothing but Q two, right? So Q two n is nothing but T X R of Q two, right? Because we are talking about Q two, right? So this is Q two, T is Q two, correct? T is Q two, Q two X R of Q two. What is Q two X R of Q two? A X R of B again. A B bar plus A bar B. Hmm? If both are same, remember A X R of A. For example, A dot A bar plus A bar dot A. This is zero. This is zero. C zero R zero. This is zero. Both the inputs are same. You will get zero. In the previous case, inputs are different. You will get one. That's X R operation. Okay, that that is nothing but you can also use it as comparator sometimes. Okay, X R also. Can. So, option A is the right answer. Right? You try this one. Now, in this problem, uh, oh, it's already six o'clock. Uh, in this problem, uh, the state diagram is given. From there, you need to find out what is the characteristic equation. You can try this problem. Hmm, we have a lot of problems to solve. Okay, fine. Okay, then we'll do one thing. Uh, we'll solve this problem in the next class. Uh, if you have a class, then you can join another class. Uh, then this is this whatever we are discussing after now. Okay, will be for Ashutosh because he was asking about pre input x bar and pre input x bar. So, uh, what is x r and x r? Right, let's say a, b. You talk about a x r b. Then this is a x r b whole complement. Right, this is simple term. This is x r, b x r. Zero 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 one one zero one one zero one 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 zero. This is input. Now, what is pre input thing? We have a, b, c, and we have something like a x r of b, x r of b, and we have to calculate a x r of b, x r of b whole complement. So the task here is the way we have done two input. You cannot do the same thing here, right? And I remember this. A X R of B complement is equal to A X R of B, right? Here, the catch here is A X R of B X R of C is not equal to A X R of B X R of C complement. That's a catch here. For three input condition, it is not valid. I cannot write like that, right? If the number of inputs are even, 
number of inputs are even this is value if number of inputs are odd then you cannot take the same conclusion to the so why means you can just calculate and then simply you can do that right so let's say for example hmm, let's go to the next page to be very clear let's compute it a p c and i can write a x r of p x r of c i can compute like this a x r of p i can compute then i will do x r of c right similarly uh, okay a x r of p i will compute then after that whatever the result that i got i will do x r with the c hmm? right then i will compute a x r of b right then this i will compute with a x r b x r of c let's see whether they are equal or not right a x r of b i will compute right a x r of b x r of c this way it is going right and you know x r operation right x r just now we have seen if both are same then output will be zero if both are different output will be one for x naught, it is going to be opposite, right? So let me write the combination 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, different so one same zero same zero now you need to do xr operation between these two hmm? zero zero same right zero different one different one same zero different one same zero same zero different one correct hmm? now let's look at uh, this now for x naught it is opposite right if both are same then output will be one right now let me do a b same means one same means one different means zero different means zero different means zero different means zero same means one same means one now i have to do it between this and this same x naught operation right let's say 0 and 1 different correct means 0 1 and 1 same 0 and 0 same 1 and 0 different 0 and 0 same 1 and 0 different 0 and 1 different 1 and 1 same now for your surprise these two are same. Right? So if you calculate, right, x nor means you have to take the complement of this. Right? I'll just write it here. A x r, B x r c complement means obviously you have to complement this. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. 1, 0. Okay, this is the x nor of ABC. So, if somebody asks what is x nor of ABC, x nor of ABC, you find out x r of ABC, then take the complement. Right? This is a trap. If you can compute like this, you think that A x nor B x nor C is x nor of abc which is wrong so what i mean to say is x nor of a b c is not just x nor operation of a b c not this right you have to do this first so this is a trap here okay this is a big trap this is a big trap so what we will tell thumb rule is simple thumb rule is very simple doesn't matter whether number of inputs are even or odd, right? First, you compute x or of a, b, r, c, whatever it is. 
right then x nor of abc is not of x or of abc this much you should do doesn't matter number of inputs are even or like if you want to calculate x nor of ap right then you do not of x or of ap then you don't go uh, you, you don't go you are wrong anywhere right so a x r b x r c is equal to a x r b x r c this is one of the most miscellaneous in gates right you think a x r b x r c will give you so what is x r of a b c what is x r of a b c a x r b x r c you find out take the complement and this is not equal to a x r b x r of c is it crystal clear ashutosh okay now uh, this uh, this kind of problems will come in the full ladder problems okay they might have given you circuit and then asked you to find out what is x what is output of all those things right mm. Because three input, so you will get in uh, sum, sum and carry of a full ladder. Okay, sum is a x r b x r c, or sum is a x n r b x n r c. That is also true, correct? So, anyone has anything? Any other question? Good, Ashutosh. You are. I really like it. You are asking me some questions, right? Great. Okay, if you don't have any question, then I can stop it right now. If you have any question, I'll wait for two more minutes, then I can stop.